Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. As seasoned Atlanta Police Department detectives, this duo has cracked hundreds of homicide cases. Working the streets of Hotlanta as a duo for 15 years, they're now teamed up for the riveting TV1 series, ATO Homicide. Take a look. Tell us the truth. I didn't do it. Right. There are people who have committed a crime and go to jail, and they want some cred. They may have 50 years to do, and they want to go in there with a badge on their chest. I killed somebody. Could have been that. With Cooper admitting that he made the whole thing up, we head back to the station to regroup. Mm. Please welcome David Quinn and Vince Velasquez. Yay. Hey! Thanks, Thanks for having us. Thanks. 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 I got so many questions. Right. I'm, I'm going to just Let say this run. right now. The Let police officers, run. detectives in my community don't look like you. But uh -oh. <laughs> we're going to move on forward. Hey, right. Okay. What has attracted you two guys to law enforcement? We, we've got different different stories. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, David, uh, and he'll get to his. Mine's quick. I didn't really plan on being a cop. Mm -hmm. I, I had a whole different career mm -hmm. uh, in the airline industry. Nice. Uh, I used to fix jumbo jets. Nice. Yeah. Air Force to the you know uh, a major airline here, but it was something was pulling me. Uh, my entire Air Force and you know aviation career, and, and it pulled me towards this career. And I, I basically took a chance. Uh, and then mm. it was a decision that, you know, I don't regret. From that point on, you know, homicide was something that, you know, gravitated towards. And I met, I met this guy. This is, right. not, this is not my brother, but that's my brother. Right. We you can't know. run from your calling. We no. blood. <laughs> For me, I was six years old. I knew. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I saw my cousins, you know, getting beat down in the street by cops. I went to visit my cousins in prison. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to just have another voice. I mean, since I was six, strong six, I wanted to be the police because I want to go back in those communities. And... Two years after high school, that's where I was at 20 years old. Stayed yeah. till I was 50, so that wow. was my grind. Well, that is that is your calling and your purpose. And you have six children. Six. And a, your wife is also a police officer. She's a sergeant She's at a the sergeant. Zone Six precinct in Atlanta. Now, yeah. Zone Six. Now, yeah. now you don't know me. Yeah. I just Southeast. did a I just did a movie called Equal Standard, where I play a police officer, okay. a sergeant. I bet you could And do my that. husband, I did. Yeah. And my husband um, was a detective. And the, you know, the one of the stories, because it's like Crash, it's set up like Crash. One oh. of the stories is where my husband was racially profiled and by another white police officer, and they end up drawing the guns on each other. But my husband killed the white police mm. officer and was injured by the, um, by the police officer that, okay. that he killed. Wow. So it, it goes into depth about that. But what I want to know is, which is, which was an interesting situation, mm -hmm. an interesting experience. What I want to know is, how do you, how do you um, dissect yourself from what goes on in your craft, and then you have to come home and be dad and mm -hmm. husband. How, do you take your work with you at any time? Wow, so I didn't have any hobbies, right? No mm -hmm. bowling, no fishing. I right. got six kids, that's what, five and a half gallons of milk a week forever, Johnny. right? That's My wife's hobby. a police officer. <laughs> she don't want to have that stuff when she get home. She's also a cop. Right. You know, she's yeah. got one more year and she's gonna be gone. So what's interesting is, I just wanted to do it. So that was my hobby, you know, yeah. I, I coached, you know, basketball, soccer mm -hmm. for my kids and all that stuff, but at the same time, she had me folding clothes and everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody want to hear your stories, I got them too, right. so it's a little, It's a little different too with having a wife that's a police officer, because she deals with the same thing. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, before we came in, we're on the phone, he's in my car on speakerphone talking with my son. Uh, my son grew up with us in the police department. Mm -hmm. We had to bring him to, on the way to a crime scene, drop him off at the secretary's oh, office. Wow. Real talk, you know, real talk. Uh, So we were joking about that. My son's 24, graduated college. Uh, so the separation is real. You, you got to, you know, most police officers want to talk to everybody about what they do. We, we didn't do that. Like, you know, nobody wants to hear cop stories. Mm -hmm. You know, unless, you know, you have some very interesting, nobody wants to hear about you chased anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not fun. I mean, it's, this is part of what we do. You right. know? So at the end of the day, it's, for me, it was very easy. It was a very easy separation because I leave my work at work, I'm at home with my son, I reset and do it the next day. So police brutality and, um, and us now witnessing the killings and things of that nature on uh, social media, um, it's not new. It is, as far as the social media, yes, but the right. brutality is not new. How is that affecting you guys um, at work? It's it tough. never affected us. I'm talking about what we did because Homicide for us was community, mm -hmm. period. You have to embrace the people you serve. I, I can't tell you what's up with the president. I can't tell you what's up with the chief. I can tell you I will be in that corner store in the barbershop before the murder, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be there definitely after. Embrace the community. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I see all this stuff, people having trouble. 
I was at work the night the Rodney King thing broke loose, a beat cop. I remember driving my patrol car down into the guts, down into the hood, and saying, yo, we in this together. That's what's up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I see that you got to go back to the community. Mm -hmm. They say community policing, but... I, you know, let's, I want to see your car down up in there. Right, yeah, you got to get out trust. of your car. You got to, mm -hmm. you know, cops have to get out. Like, I looked at this video from Baltimore, and I couldn't believe it. Like, I'm watching this, and there's nothing that could have precipitated this cop to beat that man the way he did. Mm -hmm. You know, he quit or he got fired. I mean, he should be indicted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, let me tell you something. Like, we, you know, people know dirty cops. No, they mm -hmm. don't do dirt around mm -hmm. good cops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because... <laughs> We're gonna tell. Right. Yeah. We, we worked discuss. those cases. Me and Vinny actually yeah. worked cases. We they worked had us working dirty cop cases. cases. You know, indictment packages were put together. You gotta you gotta no. roll something. We've had we've so. had Atlanta police officers sit in our desk and we had to read them the rights and say, oh, Hey, wow. I know that's right. You know, before we go any further, you need to understand what you're about to say could incriminate you because that's where we're at with this. Now in, in ATL homicide, with all of this going on and all of this information that we need to get out to the community, what can we take away and what what should the viewer be looking for? What are you guys going to show us that we have not yet seen? It's it's the connection and what we think we've gotten the positive feedback is the connection that David and I have with the community and I think it's portrayed when we narrate the stories, the actors get it uh, and it, to true to life, that's who we were. Mm -hmm. You know, he has a good saying, when you connect with the community, the family becomes you. We become almost a surrogate of that person that was mm -hmm. killed. The family trusts us enough. We give our cell phone numbers, like David has mentioned in the past, to the mother, the father. Other detectives like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, why are you doing what? that? Why won't you do that? Yes. That's they just they lost their, their son, their daughter. Why right. wouldn't you have a connection with these people? I, I have one question. What is the solution to what is the solution in reference to connecting the community to the police department? Because a lot of people are afraid of the police. Mm, yeah. Stop the talk, stop all the, the platforms, and just get out there street by street. You're not going to win everybody with one little press conference. You have to get out there and, you know, right. walk some old woman home with her groceries. You got to yeah. sometimes answer the phone when you're at the crib yeah. because somebody might have an issue. Yes. You're going to see in this show, we parked the car with these suits on and we walked them streets. Well, I, I, everyone and everyone should really watch ATL Homicide mm -hmm. because I'm really excited to see all that they have to, to tell us. We want to thank you guys so much for being here. I wish we had more time. Thank I would just ask y'all a million questions. We appreciate it. Um, you can watch Detective Quinn and Velasquez on the hit series ATL Homicide Mondays at 10 p.m. Eastern on TV One. Next up.